If I could have your attention, please. We will probably begin in about one minute. Everyone must be in a seat when we begin. If, you're not, if you don't have a seat, then you'll need to go outside and you can listen to the uh, proceedings from outside. But if you'll please go ahead and take a seat. legislator body is now in session with the Honorable Drone Moon Chairman presiding. All persons having business with this Honorable Commission, draw near, give attention, and you shall be heard. God save the United States of America, the great state of Tennessee, and this Honorable Commission. The Reverend Dale Buchanan, pastor of Rio East Church, will lead us in prayer. Father, it's with great appreciation that we come to you this evening. We thank you so much for this great country that you've allowed us to reside in. Lord, we thank you for Tennessee and for Blount County. And Lord, I just praise you for all the miracles and the wonders that you've allowed us to enjoy here in this beautiful state. And God, we pray that this evening you would reach out across our country and touch our country. We're a hurting nation. Lord, many people have been wounded and, and hurt in the last few weeks. We ask you to touch them. And here at home, Lord, we're so thankful for the privilege of being free. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to begin this session with prayer. I thank you, Lord, for each of the districts represented here tonight. I thank you, Father, for, for each of the representatives, Lord, for each of the offices. And I pray, Lord, that during this meeting this evening that you would give supernatural wisdom and discretion and discernment for each of the situations that are discussed. Lord, we love you so much, and we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that you showed our, your love to us through the, the sacrifice that you made, and we just praise you for all you're doing. We ask all these favors in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Boy Scout Troop 88 will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag. Thank y'all. Y'all may be seated. <coughs> I'd like to welcome everyone to the April 18th, 2013 Blood of Blunt County Board of Commissioners meeting. I'd like to thank Reverend Buchanan for his prayer this evening and Boy Scout Troop 88 for the presentation of colors. At this time, please give your attention to the evacuation procedures. Before we get started, let me read the emergency evacuation procedures. In the event of an emergency evacuation, an alarm will sound. Everyone should exit the building by way of the nearest stairwell in a safe and effective manner. If the nearest stairwell is blocked by smoke, use the other stairwell. Do not use the elevator. Once you have reached the main floor, follow the exit signs to exit the building and quickly proceed away from the building. Please be mindful of others evacuating and of emergency vehicles. <clears throat> At this time, the commission will come to order. Members, please register your presence by voting yes. Thank <laughs> you. 
<clears throat> Mr. Clerk. <clears throat> you have 18 present, three absent, you have a quorum. <clears throat> Mr. French sends his regrets tonight. He has a conflict, and uh, Commissioner Birchfield is en route to the meeting. At this chair time, the chair will stand for a motion to set the agenda. Mr. Lewis moves to set. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Folk seconds. Discussion on the agenda as published. Are the members ready for the question? Vote yes to set the agenda. Vote no not to set. Eighteen yes, zero no. The agenda is set. Agenda item B, the consent calendar. The chair will stand for a motion to approve the consent calendar. Mr. Lewis moves. Second is by Mr. Commissioner Samples. Discussion? Just a moment, sir. Mr. Burkhalter, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I kindly request that the election of notaries be removed from the, cons I mean, be removed out from voting all at one time. The election of? Notaries item B3. Still to be underneath the consent calendar, but just voted on separately from everything else underneath the consent calendar. Election of the notaries, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. We'll move that to the last item of business on the agenda. Understand. <clears throat> remove B three from the current motion. You asked to have an item removed. It should go to some other item on the on the, on the agenda. So. Let's move it to the first item of business as under new business. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other discussion? Are the members ready for the question? Is the motion is to approve the consent calendar without the election of notaries. Vote yes to approve the consent calendar. Vote no not to approve. <clears throat> 17 yeses and one no. 17 yes, one no. The consent calendar is approved. At this time, I'd request Mayor Mitchell, Commissioner Lewis, and Commissioner Harrison, if they come forward, please, for a presentation.
Next item of business is agenda item C, public input on items on the agenda. Yes, ma'am, if you'll come forward, please, and introduce yourself and the district in which you reside and the item that you'll be speaking. Yes, my name is Marquis, I'm a resident of Blunt County, sec, uh, District 4, and I'm going to speak on uh, new business, F4. I am here to protest the Blount County Commission's resolution to protest a countywide motor vehicle tax. We already have to pay state vehicle registration and licensing fees, and now you want to impose a double tax on motor vehicles in Blount County. The good citizens and taxpayers of Blount County have to once again protest the irresponsible tax and spend actions of our trusted commissioners. It is apparent that this is the quick fix band-aid proposal as usual to handle the critical issues of an unbalanced budget. It's the same old definition of insanity, doing the same things over and over and expecting different results. I ask you, with all logical thinking, why isn't there a responsible budget analysis being done to cut out good old government waste that currently amounts to millions of dollars? If you would do this, there would be no need to increase taxes. If all Blunt County citizens conducted their personal and or business budgets as this government body does, it would have to declare bankruptcy. We do not have the authority to allocate bond money or raise taxes to sustain unbalanced budgets. So I ask you, why do you think you are above responsible behavior to have a balanced budget? We are all trying to survive in a crippled economy because of unbalanced budgets at the federal, state, county, and city levels that utilizes pandemic tax and spend behavior. Cities all over America are declaring bankruptcy. Our own American currency is ready to collapse. On a personal note, I am a senior citizen on a small fixed income. I have no other resources to help me pay this kind of wheel tax increase proposal. With the high cost of gasoline, I can only afford to put about seven gallons of gas in my car for a month. I have no luxury options to travel, except for medical appointments, grocery shopping, and minimal travel options. I pay almost a dollar sale tax for every $10 I need to spend on food and other necessities. This may not seem like much to you with your higher incomes. That's why you can't relate to people like me in Blunt County and thousands of others who are struggling to survive financially. I can't ask you to increase my small income to pay for this kind of tax increase on motor vehicle, but it appears to be very easy for you to rationalize tax and spend financial oppression upon the poorest of Blunt County citizens, or any financial level for that matter. Your seared conscience reveals that you just don't care. And so I am asking you to vote no on the resolution to propose a wheel tax referendum and any other future tax increases. Thank you, ma'am. Your time's expired. Thank you. I'll get you next. I'll get Ms. King and then you. Thank you, my name is Linda King with Citizens for Blount County's Future. I live in District 4. If you vote yes to a wheel tax, you're telling the people at home that you approve of and want this additional tax put on the citizens. Otherwise, you'd vote no and let the public know that you heard their voice in the last wheel tax referendum when they voted 72% against the proposal and that you heard them when they voted no to a wheel tax. You'd be telling them that you won't waste their money on a special election, an election for which the county general fund would see no reimbursement. You'd also be telling senior citizens that you know the pain they incur just trying to keep up with inflation and that you'll not burden them further with new taxes. One commissioner made the comment, that was five years ago, times have changed. Well, that's right, but they haven't changed for the better. We've had foreclosures, pay higher costs for property tax, food and gasoline, and we have more people on food stamps due to their employment status. 
You don't want a sunset on this wheel tax or a $35 maximum limit to the resolution because you state that it's necessary to cover ongoing needs. That pretty much tells the citizens what to expect in the future. Higher and higher wheel tax increases as it is used as a source of revenue to continue not only status quo spending but additional spending whenever the county department heads want more. Under the BEP formula, state coverage amounts to 20% for each teacher. During the budget workshop for our schools, however, it was learned that we pay 100% for 80 teachers in our system because the state claims we have too many educators per student. Why is it that we have the same number of students as in 2005, but over 30% more staff as well as several new schools? What portion of the budget goes toward administration? The wheel tax isn't for the kids. They should be ashamed for using our kids as pawns. Question. Why do the departments in Blount County cost so much more to operate than comparable counties throughout Tennessee? Anyone curious? The people in Blount County are taxed enough. It's time to step up to the plate and do the work you were elected to do. Demand cuts. Don't politely ask for cuts, but tell the county officials that they will live within revenues, just as we at home are forced to do. We didn't create this mess, but you expect us to pay for it. Vote no tonight on the wheel tax referendum proposal. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mary Cook. I live in District 4, and I have been reading a lot in the paper about all the budgets. And so I'm here to tell you that this is not for the kids. It's wasteful spending is what's going to happen. The wheel tax is not welcomed by majority of your people because I work with a lot of people. I would go see every one of you constituents at one time or another because I help the elderly. And I go to their homes and some of you would not walk into their home. You would be aghast at the way they live. But you know what? They're happy, and they're all upset with all of you. They don't like it because they can't see what's going on TV about the commission. They ask me if I know why, and I say it's because the commissioners don't want you to know what's going on in Blount County because you're not smart like they are. And I have to help find them food to eat. I have to find them I find them food banks to go, churches to go. There are elderly with their there are adult children living there and their children living there. They would drive an old car to work minimum wage. And so when I go see a lady who is 75 years old, she looks like she's 90. She weighs 83 pounds. After she pays her bills on her meager Social Security, she has $16 to eat. Her son is disabled. He gets $200 a month in food stamps to eat. He goes to all the food banks and he tells me how excited he is when he can go in and get some fresh bread and not have to go eat stale bread. And she tells me that she doesn't, it doesn't matter. She eats what she needs, but not what she wants. And that just breaks my heart. So I go home and I raid my freezer and refrigerator cupboards and take them out a sack of food and you just know, I give them a million dollars. There's no way that these seniors can afford anymore when you have 43 pages on the internet of unpaid taxes. There are people in foreclosures. Now why are there 43 pages of unpaid taxes? People can't afford anymore and I don't know where you can come from to think and have the idea to ask these elderly people or anybody on minimum wage, how in the world are they going to find more money? Because you know it's not going to stop at the first amount. You're going to want more and more and more. The next year, it'll be $100 wheel tax because you can't stop your wasteful spending. You can't ask your departments to live within their budget. And you lie to us and say it's for the kids, but it's not for the kids. It's for your wasteful spending, because you don't have enough courage to ask the departments to cut their budget. And it's too bad that some of you can't just stand up for the people instead of your own self-righteousness.
the Mr. Lowe, I called him Mr. Lowe. I'll, I'll take you next, ma'am. My name is Barney Lowe. I live at 408 Low Lane, Maryville, Tennessee. And I'm here to talk to anyone and everyone who will, may listen. I have a few words to say to each of you. Each year about this time, we get the same excuse for the way our budget ends up. It's only this way because the makeup of the budget committee is not what we need. Citizens of this committee are to blame no matter who you try to point a finger at. You know as well as I do, we need people who owe no favors, owe no ties, owes owes to speak up and ask about four departments to take up the slack because it's time we give our kids the education they need and our teachers, not administration personnel, but let's buy books, teaching technology for our schools and stop trying to find new revenues such as wheel tax, and this will change every year, instead of putting the blame on everyone except the ones that deserve the blame. You, I'm sorry to say, the commission need to rise up and ask these departments, about four of them, to kick in and receive and relieve the citizens, taxpayers of the blame. It belongs right here with this body. 21 of you do it for the kids. You only have to start to use your authority. Start now. I use this every time it seems it's for the kids. I put that in there this time to talk to you guys. Hello, my name is Jamie Daly and I live in District 10. I am a former school teacher and taught for many years and I absolutely loved it. I know our schools want money. So I, I've been looking through all the budgets and all the years for the commission and I noticed that the school budget was cut in 2007 by 5%. And by studying the budget, it looks to me like that money went to the Sheriff's Department. Now, I know we need policemen, and I know we need to be protected. But that percentage was never given back to the schools. And why was that? I know our expenditures in the Sheriff's Department have almost doubled. I noticed we have a huge new jail, which is very attractive. I also found out that we have 100 federal prisoners in our jail. Are we making money off of this? The taxpayers would like to know why those federal prisoners are in our jail. And we want every commissioner to search his heart to see what can be cut, because I know since I have lived here, for 20 years that our taxes are, um, have gone up almost 100%, our land taxes. So even though I am a teacher and I love it, this is not for the children. This is time for y'all to get to do your jobs. And I know a previous speaker talk about, talked about the delinquent taxes. It's over $3 million in delinquent taxes. Whose job is it to collect these taxes? Thank you. Good evening. My name is Bill Geffert. I live in District 7 in Friendsville. With all due respect, commissioners, ladies and gentlemen, um, like many other speakers have already said, you really do need to step up and do something that's going to be really tough. If you were all members of a private board of directors for a private company, I don't think there's one of you in this room that could possibly be go before a board of directors and say, you know what, we're going to raise all the uh, prices of our product this year 146% because we need more profit. What would that do to your company? It would make you bankrupt, wouldn't it? 
There wouldn't be anybody who would be wanting to buy a product with a 146% increase. But let's ask the taxpayers for a 146% increase, which is what this $35 bill is. Worse than that, and frankly, this is happening with so many governments today, but worse than that, you're asking for a brand spanking new checkbook. This new checkbook is going to be the wheel tax. Have any of us seen a temporary tax? <laughs> Never going to happen. And we are asking for the taxpayers to give you a brand new checkbook. And as other speakers have eloquently mentioned, year after year, it's not going to stop at $35, I'll guarantee you. That 146% increase, how many people that are on Social Security, either in this room or our taxpayers in general, received a 146% increase in their checks? How many of you in your private sector jobs received a 146% increase in your job? You have it. That's outrageous. Furthermore, you had a chance to raise taxes. You came before the voters. You did it the way it should be done. And the voters gave you a clear, uncut message. No way. In 2008, you tried a wheel tax for $10. That was overwhelmingly defeated. Yet, you're going to try it now for $35. You might raise $4.2 million. And at $4.2 million, you're only going to be able to use half of it because you've got to share the other half with Maryville and Alcoa. Who in the world would raise twice the amount of money to get to use half of it? Would that even make sense in any sector, private or public? You know, I read this, and I usually don't get involved in politics, but I had to get here tonight because I just could not believe with all the education that I'm sure is in this room that that is the best solution you can come up with as the financial overseers of this county. You really got to step up, ladies and gentlemen, make some tough decisions, and know they're not going to be easy. And I'm not against the schools, and I'm not against the teachers, and neither are the taxpayers. But we don't have that luxury of a magic wand to just have that increase in our budget. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> My name is Douglas Benton from Alcoa, and I am angry. And as you can tell, I'm not a sheeple. Commissioners, you are confusing me and the other people you are supposed to be representing. How can you possibly propose a, new, a major new tax, the wheel tax, when you have not even discussed, much less approved, a budget? What would you think if someone gave you a $100 bill and they told you they will decide sometimes, sometime in the future what, they will do, what you will get for your money? You might think they were nuts. Can you blame me for thinking the same about you? You tell me a wheel tax is more fair than a property tax? How can this be true when I have to pay the same on my 15-year-old car, which is worth nothing, as a guy who drives a brand new Lexus? Do you really think that sounds fair to you? Let's talk about the schools. We currently have an enrollment of approximately 11,300 students. The first time we had this many students in the system was 2005. That year, the schools employed 1,145 people, and they were using approximately 1.9 million square feet of space. In 2012, the schools have the same enrollment numbers. However, now the school employs 1,518 people, and we're using 2.3 million square feet of space. Do we really need 32% more people and 23% more increase in school space to educate the same number of students we had in 2005? If the schools say they, don't, they need some additional funding, why don't you look at cutting other areas of the budget? There seems to be lots of waste and overspending. Consider just a few examples. Why have the expenditures in the general government portion of the general fund increased at more than six times the rate of inflation, or 70 percent, since 2007? Can we free up some of the three million added to this budget for the schools? Can we continue to spend two million more, of our share, uh, more on our sheriff's department than the two counties closest to us in size? Should we really be spending $2 million more in our jail, on our jail than similar Tennessee counties? Can we afford to spend more than twice as much on the sheriff's vehicles as the two counties closest to us in size? Should we really be spending $45,000 to support the private heritage center? The economy is not growing. If you know anything about economics and watch something else besides PMS, NBC, you will realize that we are hurting. Before you propose any new taxes, you, you need to cut the waste from the budget. 
This is what, is what elected officials who are really represent the people are supposed to be doing. My wife and I are having to tell our kids no many more times than we say yes. The bobbing heads of Blount County Commission need to learn to say no also. By the way, I use the term bobbing heads because when someone says, Commissioners, you want to spend some more of the taxpayers' money? You all go, sure. We the voters shot down the wheel tax in 2008 when you said the money will go to the roads. Now saying the money will go to the schools is not going to work either. We do not trust you. You know, when you spend other people's money, it's not very painful. We the voters also, sh we the voters will shoot this down if it comes to a vote. Learn to say no. Thank you. Dodd Crow, District 6. Commissioner Lale, I would like to thank you for sticking your neck out and bringing this forward. Um, I think you all have been good stewards for a while. I think that you've been well watched for a long time, two years, making sure that you're watching our budget. Our county's in trouble, I understand. We've overspent. Um, I tried to figure out how we overspent and why we overspent and whose fault it was, but I come back to we've overspent. And now we were left to clean up the mess. When I was trying to figure out who overspent, when I was trying to figure out who overspent, um, I looked a lot of different ways. I looked back at old politics, but I can tell you who didn't overspend, and that was Blunt County's children. And I hear this group here talk, and I like a lot of things that they say about being smart with our money and looking to the future. But now they're asking you to turn your head on to the future because it's convenient. Turn your head on the future. Don't invest in our children. If you're going to cut, you don't want to cut your future. Poor little old people that don't have money that you were talking about. Your education is your best opportunity at a good life. Blount County is the lowest funded county around us except for Monroe County. That's a fact. Our taxes are low in Blount County. One reason they fight so hard is because they moved to Blount County not to pay taxes. But They're using your time. I don't, I'm sorry, what? They're using your time. Okay, that's okay. Um, <laughs> I, I don't want to pay taxes either, but I know our kids need it. I would say, I would love for you all to take all this energy you have. Our funding problem in Blount County is not as bad. It's just not well, it's not spread out very well. If you all would take this energy and fight for equal tax taxes for all kids, the county versus the city, take that and get that state law fixed where we would get our share, we wouldn't have a tax problem. And $8 million is going away. And I know elections coming up, so I know you all have to be careful. But I'm asking you to take a chance on our kids. It's going to be an uphill battle because everybody out there is so busy. It's going to, we're going to have to work our hineys off just to take care of our kids and to get them a fair chance. Um, my hope is if we don't get the tax, at least we can educate some more people in Blount County and say, hey, guys, you've got to invest in your future. Blount County's falling behind. We got some, right now we're looking good. You can't sustain this growth if you don't invest in it. Any businessman knows that. Thank you for your hard work. Please, please be seated. Applause will be accepted. Anything else, people are going to have to leave now. Let's have respect. The gentleman in the back. No, this, this gentleman. I'll get you next. I'm Rick Beatty. live in Maryville. Um, I really can't say it any better than the folks who already said it, even the opposite viewpoint that was just presented. Uh, one of you said, I couldn't find the quote, 
in the paper just now, but uh, pretty much echoed the last sentiment that, uh, you know, we don't have a spending problem. At least it was quoted in the paper that you said, we don't have a spending problem, we have a tax collection problem. Well, that's pretty obvious what the attitude of this commission as a whole seems to be to me since I moved back to Maryville about eight years ago. We have a tax collection problem. We can't collect enough. We don't have a spending problem. We have no trouble spending. We don't even spend it for what it's supposed to be spent for. It's going to go to the teachers. It's going to go to the schools. People, I'm not against the schools or the teachers. As one of the people said, most of the citizens aren't. But they are against overspending, certainly wasteful spending, and certainly manipulation of spending when you tell the people this is what it's going to go to. And I would think that some of the educators here might, instead of wanting the public to pay another $35 minimum, heaven forbid they got two old cars, then it's 70 this year, increased by whatever amount you all decide to increase it in the next few years. But they might be concerned that they had some $5 million taken away out of their budget. That's manipulation. But as it's been pointed out, are our elected officials working to resolve the problem? Or are we just up here to basically give whoever's got their attention this year, next year, in the past, either what they want or an increase in what they want? Anyway, I'm disappointed. I was here about last year or so, and uh, I swore I wasn't going to come back. But tonight when I came back and I listened, I swore if I ever come back, I'm going to at least stand up and let you all know which side I'm on. And I'm on your side, but I'm on the citizen side first, and I wish you'd vote no tonight. My name is James Gann. I live in District 8. I'll be the first to say taxes are not fun, but there's something we have to live with. For a moment, though, I want you to turn your thoughts away from the fact that we are dealing with adding a tax. Turn your thoughts from the here and now and think about the future of Blount County. Think about the students and the students to come. In truth, the some odd 30 people who will face today's economy without work to support their families, one of which stands before you now, will not experience the greatest suffering if this referendum is not sent to the ballot and passed. Those who will suffer the most are the students of Blount County. Without enough teachers to give them the attention they need, without proper textbooks to learn from, and without the needed technology to take the mandated tests that they need to take, they will be set up to fail in today's society and the society of the future. President Ronald Reagan said, there are no constraints on the human mind, no walls around the human spirit, no barriers to our progress except those we ourselves erect. If you vote against this referendum, you are erecting those constraints, those walls, and those barriers around the living future of our county. By voting against this referendum, you send a message to the students that they are worthless. And they will not forget this. Their families will not forget this. Please do not tell them that they are without worth. Benjamin Franklin said, if a man empties his purse into his head, no man can take it away from him. An investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. Likewise, President Kennedy said, let us not think of education, or excuse me, let us think of education 
as the means of developing our greatest abilities. Because in each of us, there is a private hope and dream, which fulfilled can translate into benefit for everyone and greater strength for our nation. Please give our students the high quality education they need and deserve to fulfill that hope and that dream that President Kennedy spoke of. Please think of the students and give them what they need. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Phyllis Cassio. I'm from Townsend, District 8. Pull, we'll pull it down. Okay. Tonight, as I approach you, is to help. I'm wanting to ask one of us is missing something. Either y'all or I'm missing it. You continue to increase spending, but I don't understand where, where you think the money comes from without always taxing us. And it was, you know, I fuss every year about property taxes. Either the assessment goes up or you know, what you pay, or else the taxes go up on the house. And uh, now this, now we've got a will tax. So I'm fussing about taxes in general, okay? Not, the will tax is bad enough. Surely you know that these are difficult times, so how can you never talk, how can you talk about a never before will tax, or at least it's been voted down before here? And, um, and, he, and which is going to and this really got me. It's going to cost maybe eighty thousand dollars for the election in about another month or two, for a wheel tax. If this tax is so important, why are we not waiting till in the fall so it can be on the agenda with other items instead of standing by itself? You're going to use all this money. You know, it used to be that when we had our homes paid off, we had a mortgage burning party. No more because. With all these taxes, our homes are never paid for. It just continues on. I'm wanting to ask, what will y'all do as commissioners? Will you tighten your belts and cut back on something else? Because we haven't even started paying down part of the budget yet. That I mean, part of the, what, the debt that we owe. I want you to listen to a few words of this song before, uh, before I close. And don't worry, I'm not going to sing. It's entitled, we must take America back. And taking America back starts right here at the local level. We must take America back from Main Street in Maryville to Wall Street in New York, cities and states, Washington, D.C., before it's too late. We need leaders who lead us, not stick us and bleed us, then ransom our future and our children's. That's wrong. As liberty weeps, our forefathers spin in their graves. I pray God will bless some way out of the, this mess. We must take America back, and it's got to begin here at the local level. Lynn Eubanks, Alcoa, Tennessee, uh, District 2. George Bernard Shaw said, we are made wise not by our recollection of the past, but by our responsibility for our future. Our responsibility for our future. The children of Blount County are the future of Blount County. The children of Blount County are our responsibility. Our responsibility to this county entails providing the children of our county with the best possible education. Our responsibility to our county, to our future, to our children is to provide our school system, to provide our children with the tools to compete in today's society. Being responsible is not always easy, and, and Commissioner Lale, thank you. Thank you. Being responsible is not cheap. Those of us who own cars know that. And to quote Colin Powell, and this is a quote, being responsible sometimes means pissing people off. You commissioners are charged with being responsible. You are charged with being responsible for our children, for the children of the county. Do right by our children. Give all of our citizens the right 
to decide, not just those who come up and speak. A wise person once told me that no one should bring a child into this world unless they were prepared to be parents for life. It took me a long time to comprehend what this person was saying. It was only after entering the field of education and watching the interaction of the generations did I understand what this meant. To paraphrase another quote, whether or not you have children, you are parents to the next generations. If we can stop thinking of children as our property and think of them as our future, then and only then can we realize that we all have a role and a responsibility to play. Each and end of every one of us has a responsibility to our children and to the schools. Thank you. Anyone else? Sir, if you'll come forward. Thank you. My name's Robert Taylor. I'm in the uh, third district. Education is the engine that drives economic growth in Blount County. All of us want to see Blount County grow and prosper. How much money do we spend on economic development in Blount County? All of that money is wasted if we also don't invest in our schools. Students in Blount County receive below the state average in per pupil funding and achieve higher than average academic results. We read that again. They receive below the state average in per pupil funding and yet can achieve higher than average academic results. I wonder what the students in Blount County could achieve with the appropriate funding. Blount County Schools has shown to me that it can generate good results with very limited resources. The Heritage STEM program is a great example of this. Are you aware that 17 seniors are on track to graduate with a STEM endorsement on their high school diploma? To my knowledge, this was accomplished without any additional funding by the school system. The return on investment currently generated by the school system leads me to believe that we need to invest more in the school system and not less. Let's give them the tools they need to accomplish the job. Let's invest in our future now by investing in our school system today. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no, yes, please come forward. Good evening, I'm Karen Miller and I'm from District 4. A wheel tax, I'd like to talk on F4 tonight. A wheel tax is not needed in Blount County. What is needed in this county is to stop the overspending in the county's general budget. It takes discipline from this commission to be able to make the correct decisions to uh, cut, make sure the department heads get cut where they need to be cut. There's too much wasteful spending in this county and that's why our schools are suffering. The, the schools were reduced uh, back a number of years ago. Money was taken from them that was never replaced and that money was just wasted foolishly and it should have been returned to the schools. In 2008, around 72% of the voters voted against a $10 wheel tax. Today, our economy is in much worse shape than it was at that time, and we already pay way too many taxes now. To waste $80,000 of the taxpayers' monies on a referendum is unacceptable. The general government fund is up 70%, $3 million since 2008. With uh, the correct spending adjustments, we could have an average county budget savings of $9,753,000, which could help the schools out. It does not take a village to raise a child. It's a parent's responsibility to train their children, and we should not be bled to death because we have 80 more teachers than what we need. We have too much school space, too many buildings that aren't being utilized correctly. I urge you to vote no on this uh, ref wheel tax referendum.
Thank you. Steve Carpenter, District 10. Bless your hearts. <laughs> Thank you for doing this job. It's very tough to sit and listen to some of these things. I would like to address just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, we hear this number 82 many teachers over and over again. Uh, I'm sorry, but somebody has their facts misconstrued. If you remove 80 classroom teachers from this county, uh, we won't be able to have school. <laughs> we are just not that over bloated on staff. Uh, so I advise somebody to please check your facts and figures. Secondly, I would like to say, and I am a school teacher, by the way, I've taught for 30 years in the county. I'm at William Blunt High School. And we talk very frequently about the fact that the job is not what it used to be, and it's not, nor are the facilities. We look at a piece of nice technology like you have up here, these nice microphones, things of that nature. These, whatever this costs you to put in place is a drop in the bucket, of course, to what it costs to put technology like that in our schools. We need it. We're going to have to have it for the future of our children. I'm not smart enough to know whether or not a wheel tax is the only option for funding the schools, but I can tell you that this budget that, you're, that the schools board has presented to you is not an overbloated budget. We need to fund that somehow, find a way, whether it's a wheel tax, whether it's whatever, cutting. I think everybody in this room agrees. We don't want more taxes, but I think we also can agree too that whatever it takes is necessary to fund the schools. Please do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Grady Kasky. I'm, I'm a teacher in Blunt County Schools, and I wanna thank you guys for, and ladies, for uh, the service that you provide to Blunt County. Uh, leadership, Mr. Chairman, is doing things that may not be popular, uh, but they're the right thing to do. Um, this commission will make a decision tonight that will directly impact the students in Blunt County, not only now, but in the future. Uh, you will decide whether to allow the people of Blount County to decide. You have it within your authority and within your power to enact a wheel tax tonight. You could do that without ever sending it to the voters. But what, you, what we're asking you to do is at least, in a very minimum, allow the voters to decide. That's what democracy is all about. This meeting right here is an example of democracy. Let the people decide. If they want to pay it, they'll pay it. If they don't, they'll vote it down. But isn't that what this country is all about? <coughs> Excuse me. If you choose not to do that, then you're sending a statement to Blount County students that you don't support public education, in, and we're getting enough of that from Nashville. We need some support locally. Um, former Senator Russell Long from Louisiana, when he found himself in a similar situation dealing with taxes on both sides of the issue, once said that the other side, who was against all taxes, seemed to say, don't tax you, don't tax me, tax that feller behind the tree. Mr. Chairman, there is no one behind the tree but you and me. Somebody's got to pay for the services that we provide in this county. Let's let the people decide what level of services they want to fund. That's democracy at its best. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anyone else? Mr. Grosjean. more consensus than there is disagreement tonight, and I want to try and identify the consensus, if I might. Um, F4, correct. I'm in District 9, by the way. Um, but a, a point of 
Uh, <laughs> my friend, Mr. Gasky, betrays his education by calling us a democracy. Sir, we're a republic. And be describing what would happen in an election might describe the situation that we find in our republic where more people get a check from the government than pay into it. And that is a sad situation we find ourselves in today. Uh, I think the consensus is that we all want to see education funded. The question is, where, do the, where, where does the responsibility lie? Well, the responsibility lies here. But you have decided to, that really, you have done all your job is willing to do. And you say, now it's time for me to pay more because you're not willing to undo what you did in 2007. As Ms. Daly, I believe it was, spoke earlier about the commission taking five cents or 5% of the budget from education in 2007, and as Commissioner Fultz pointed out on the radio show yesterday, use that saving that, that money to create a fund balance of $10 million in your county general fund today. So I ask you to just simply undo what the courageous commissioners did in 2007 and give the money back to the schools that was taken from them by this commission and quit saying that you're not responsible gentlemen, because I know you are. Quit acting like the children are some kind of magic bait that you're going to hold out in front of the taxpayers and out of the, in front of the educators and say, the taxpayers need to pay you more because it's our future. We all agree it's our future, sir. You stole it from the children in 2007. Now give it back to them. Thank you. For the record, I don't think there's that many 2007 commissioners left in the corner. Thank you. My name is Jason Rowe. I live in District 4, and I'm a school teacher in Blount County. And I just wanted to, I've heard a lot of uh, people talk about taxes and waste and the word theft has come up. And that's an attitude that I see that uh, it seems that a lot of people have, is that tax is equal to stealing. But what, us, what it seems to me that we're forgetting is that taxes fund services. We get something back. And I'd like to thank everyone for their com comments uh, about the need for responsible spending. I guess I have a philosophical difference. I don't see our budget as bloated. I don't see uh, $8 million just laying around that we can pick up and you know, cut out without pain. Um, I also recognize the, the, the troubles and the pain that seniors feel living on a fixed income. I have two parents that uh, uh, live on Social Security. And back to that services thing, Let's not forget that the Social Security that seniors rely on and the Medicare that seniors rely on are paid for with taxes. I believe that a wheel tax is a great way to, to provide the, the absolutely necessary money that we need to provide the best education that we can for our students. And I believe that it's up to everyone to make sure that that money is spent wisely, but I believe that it will be a great service and an investment in our future and our kids' future for this county. And that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, seeing no hands, we have no items under agenda item D or E, so we'll move to the election of notaries, the item that was moved from the consent calendar, item B3, so the chair will stand for a motion. Mr. Lale moves to approve. Mr. Carver seconds. Discussion. Are the members ready for the question?
Vote yes to approve the notaries. Vote no not to approve. Mr. Melton. 18 yes is more than 18 yes, zero no. The election of the notaries is approved. Next item of business is F1A. The chair will stand for motion on item F1A, resolution 1304007, to amend the general county fund budget by $7,450. Mr. Samples moves. Is there a second? Mr. Kaler seconds. The motion is to adopt resolution 1304007. The members ready for the question. Mr. Folks, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, may I ask uh, Mr. Vignette a question? Ask a question, sir. Thank you. Um, in effect, this creates a, an, a new additional full-time judicial commissioner position, does it not? Mr. Folks, I believe that is, is Mr. Hatcher here or someone from his office here tonight? Mr. Hatcher, if you'd be recognized. Well, okay. I'd rather have, have the department head address it. Can you repeat your question, please, sir? Yes, uh, as I understand what's being done here, we're taking a part-time position and we're turning it into a new full-time position. Is that it's correct? Two part-time uh, positions. Mr. Okay, go ahead. How many? Two part-time positions, Mr. Folk. We're taking two and we're creating how many full-time positions? One full-time position. And what's going to happen to the other part-time? The other two part-time? We won't have to, the two part-time has gone away when we make the new full-time. We're using the money from the two part-time to fund this position. Uh, how does that work in terms of people? You don't have those two people on staff right now as part-timers? They're on as part-time when we need them, yes. We call them in when we need them, yes, sir. Okay. They will not be on when we make the full-time. Okay. So we are creating an additional full-time position. That is correct. Okay. Uh, this is something we shouldn't do lightly because your benefit load, and it's not your doing, I understand, but the benefit load in your organization runs about 44% of salary. That is, we've got to take the salary of the person and add 44% to get the cost of a full-time person. And anybody who looked at what happened at the Human Resources Committee the other day uh, is well aware of the costs of adding full-time people. Um, our benefit costs are very high, and they're not going to get better. So um, I don't know what the hurry is. You're not out of money for part-time people or overtime money. I looked at your budget. Uh, why don't we just table this until we can discuss it in the context of a budget next month? Uh, Commissioner, do you understand you're making a motion to table? I'm making a motion to table. Is there a second? Till next month. Hearing no second, motion to table fails. Mr. Burkhalter, you're recognized, sir. I just have a question for the, for the clerk, if he can come forward, please. Ask your questions, Chair, please. My, my question, Mr. Chairman, is in his opinion, is it necessary to have a full-time position to fulfill the duties of the magistrate? Well, let me say this. The, the magistrate or judicial commissioners are under the supervision of the general session judge. The general sessions judges are the one has come to me because I have to supervise these folks because we're paying out a lot of overtime to full-time people right now because part-time people have another full-time job. They only work when we need them or if they're available. So when they're not available, we're having to use a full-time person to fulfill that. We're not able to fulfill 
the schedules so that we're, you know, we have a lot of part or a lot of overtime. So yes, it is the judges, in my opinion, at this time, that we can save money in the long run by having a full-time person in this position and have a more qualified person in this position because it is very important. It's a person that signs warrants, has people arrested and put in jail and sets bonds on them. And that person needs to be fully educated with the part-time people. We have trouble getting them to go to classes because of other jobs and that. It is very serious and yes, it is our opinion that we do need another full-time position. Mr. Burkhalter. So we are paying overtime right now too. So basically by the overtime cost is not reflected in the savings, is that correct? I'm sorry. The overtime that we're paying right now is not reflected in this budget, the amount of savings we're going to have? No, sir. So we actually could save the county money by doing this? Yes, we will be. That's all I need to hear. Thank you. Mr. Folks, you're recognized, sir. Thank you. Um, how many full-time judicial commissioners do we have right now? Just a moment. Let me turn. Go ahead. We have four full-time at the Justice Center, and we have one here in the courthouse at the juvenile uh, court system. So we have five full-time. And how many part-time do we have? We have three. Um, about a year ago, you, you gave me a list of judicial commissioners, you gave me a whole bunch of data, which I very much appreciated. Um, at that time, it looked like, um, and I went back and looked at the data, it looked like we had um, seven full-time. Uh, well, we never had seven full-time that I know of. I was listed as a judicial yes, commissioner. Yes, you were. And Pat Gillespie was listed as one. Terry there Travis. There were four, four in that category who had other jobs who filled in, you and three yes. others. Yes. Yes. And then there were nine names in addition to those. Yeah, th those are not there now. We've had several that's gone. The only, only judicial commission we have is the four full-time there at the Justice Center. We have one here. We have one of the clerks that is sworn in over here as a judicial commissioner in an emergency situation. And we have one at the Justice Center now that is sworn in in emergency situations. So a uh, total of seven, it looks like, if I've We have, understood. yes, we have, we can have seven, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Are the members ready for the question? Vote yes to adopt the resolution. Vote no not to adopt. Eighteen yeses. Eighteen yes, zero no. The resolution is adopted. Moving to the next item, F1B. The chair will stand for motion on F1B resolution 13-04008 to amend the general county fund budget by $87,000. Mr. Lewis moves. Is there a second? Mr. Is that Mr. Harrison? Mr. Burkhalter seconds. The motion is to adopt resolution 13-04008. Discussion? Are the members ready for the question? Vote yes to adopt the resolution. Vote no not to adopt. Nineteen yes, zero no. The resolution is adopted. Next item is F1C. The chair will stand for motion on item F1C, resolution 13-04009, a resolution to amend the Educational Capital Projects Fund budget by $90,000. <coughs> Mr. Lale, who, who made the original motion? Mr. Burkhalter moved. Mr. Lale second. The resolution is to, the motion is to to adopt resolution 13-04009. Discussion? Are the members ready for the question? Vote yes to adopt the resolution. Vote no not to adopt.
19 yes. 19 yes, 0 no. The resolution is adopted. The next item of business is item F2. The chair will stand for motion on F2, resolution 1304006, authorizing submission of application for litter and trash collection grant from the state of Tennessee and authorizing acceptance of the grant. Lale moves, Carver seconds. The motion is to adopt resolution 13040006. Discussion. Are the members ready for the question? Vote yes to adopt the resolution. Vote no not to adopt. Nineteen yes, zero no. The resolution is adopted. Next item of business is F three. Chair will stand for motion on item F three, resolution thirteen zero four zero zero five, approving of non-payment of delinquent tax of one parcel of property, which was authorized under resolution thirteen zero three zero zero eight. Commissioner Hasty moves. Is there a second? Commissioner Farmer seconds. The motion is to adopt resolution 13-04-005. Discussion? Are the members ready for the question? Vote yes to adopt the resolution. Vote no not to adopt. Nineteen yes, zero no. The resolution is adopted. The next item of business is F4. The chair will stand for motion on item F4, resolution 13-04002, to call a referendum on the question of whether a countywide motor vehicle tax should be levied for Blount County, Tennessee. Mr. Lale moves. Is there a second? Mr. Burkhalter seconds. The motion is to adopt Resolution 13-04-002. Commissioner Folks, you're recognized, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I must raise a, a point of order. State your point of order, sir. Regarding the pros resolution, Rule 6A of the Commission says that, and I'm quoting, all resolutions must have all necessary supporting documentation attached prior to inclusion in the agenda for the meeting. The resolution under consideration states, and I quote, whereas the need for new revenue sources is great in Blount County, unquote. The only documentation that could possibly support that statement in the resolution would be an approved budget for next year. No such budget has been approved or even discussed by this commission. No such documentation is attached to the resolution. Therefore, this resolution violates Commission Rule 6A and is out of order. It's the opinion of the chair that it is in order. There is a school, the school board has submitted a budget that has a significant deficit. So it's the opinion of the chair that the, that the resolution is in order. Uh, with with uh, respect for the chair, the school budget becomes part of the overall budget, and that has not been approved by this commission. So well, I still think it's out of order. And you're asking for a ruling of the chair. I gave you an opinion, so you're asking for a ruling of the chair. I'm the chair the rules the chair. that the, the, the chair's ruling is that it is in order, and the chair appeals to the body for a vote if it's in order. Just, just a minute, just a minute. I second that. Vote yes if you are upholding the rule of the chair. Vote no 
to not uphold the rule of the chair. Please vote. Sixteen yes. Sixteen yes. Three no's. Three no's. The ruling's upheld. The pending motion. The pending motion. Just a moment. Just a moment. Commissioner Melton, you're recognized. Thank you, sir. I'd like to change my vote. I punched the wrong. I punched no. It should have been yes. <laughs> Seventeen yes. And two no. Rule of chairs upheld. The pending motion on the floor is to adopt resolution 13-04-002. Mr. Folks, I'm coming back to you. Your, your point of order is heard. Are you seeking the floor? Your light was on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to offer an amendment. State your amendment, sir. I'd like to amend this resolution to add a provision that would require a vote of the people before any future increase in this wheel tax can be opposed. If it is so important that the people be able to vote on this tax now. Uh, Commissioner Folks, could, could you help me for just one moment? Where would you like to insert the language of your amendment? You can put it I think we could uh, we could put it as a separate uh, section. So your 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 section is to section 8. Add insert section 8 state state your amendment sir. And what it would say is that any increase in this wheel tax would require a referendum to be voted on, voted on by the people. Okay, let me see if I've got this correct. Insert section eight, any future increase in wheel tax would require a referendum. That's correct. Is there a second to the amendment? Ms. Merle seconds. The pending motion is an amendment Inserting section eight, any future increase wheel tax would require a referendum. Discussion on the amendment. Commissioner Birchfield. No, Comm Commissioner Lale. Do you have your Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, since the original intent of this was to put this question before the people, and that's what we have attempted to do. As the originator of the proposal, I have no issue with that amendment coming to the proposal because uh, there is no intent, as has been stated many times, by making this a continuation and constantly going up like it, it has happened in other places. That was never the intent of this proposal. This intent of this proposal was to put the question before the people as a method of supporting the needs expressed to us in our many meetings with the school board and trying to anticipate another alternative way to get away from continually raising property taxes. And, sir, I have no issue with your amendment. Commissioner Harrison, you're recognized? Yes. Uh, it was brought up the other night. What, did we ever determine the exact cost that this is going to impose on our taxpayers to do point, this? Point of order. It's, that question goes to the main motion, not to the amendment. 
That's correct. That's correct. Commissioner Burkhalter, you're recognized, sir. Mr. Chairman, just a point of clarification. I, I agree with Mr. Lay on the fact that I don't mind the amendment that, Ms. that Commissioner Fultz is recommending, but I do have concern. It has been the policy and the procedure of this body not to tie the hands of future commissions. I believe that by adding this language to this resolution, we are tying the hands of future commissions. Sir, Mr. Folks, you're recognized for the second time. Well, that's exactly the objective. <laughs> this, this should not set in motion a blank check. Order, order, please be in order. This should not set in motion a blank check that can be added to any time the commission feels like it. So it's the objective to tie the hands of future commissions. And if that's a bad thing, then I don't know. I don't think that's a bad thing. Thank you. Commissioner Samples, you're recognized, sir. I understand what you're saying, Commissioner Burkhalter. However, this commission and commissions before it have always tied the hands of future commissions. Otherwise, we'd have no bonds due right now because this commission has never passed a bond. But we respect what past commissions did. Are the members ready for the question? The pending motion is to amend the resolution by in Yes, state your point of order. And the seconder of the motion both have expressed approval of this amendment. Therefore, I don't believe a question or a vote is necessary because we both stated that we would be glad to approve this amendment. Uh, I don't think a vote is in order. Once it's been motions made and seconded, then it belongs to the body and the body must decide. Friendly amendments technically are not in order. So the pending the pending question or pending motion is to amend the resolution by inserting section eight. Any future increase of wheel tax will require referendum. Vote yes to admit to amend. Vote no not to amend. Please vote. Mr. 19 yes, zero no. The amendment passes. Now the pending motion is to adopt resolution 1304002 as amended. Discussion. Mr. Harrison, you're recognized. Uh, just wanting to, from, from what I'm, what I'm hearing, this is, this is, I, I just. I hate to waste 82, what, what amount of money are we spending of the tax money is, uh, to do this election? Is the administrator of elections present? No, no one to answer, no, but go ahead. Nobody, I mean, we, we've tossed out a couple different numbers, 40,000, 80,000, 86,000. What money are we spending of our taxpayers or, you know, if, if this is voted no, what, what money are we wasting that could be given to the schools? Mr. Chairman. Just a moment. Commissioner Kaler, you haven't spoken. Uh, yes, if, uh, Commissioner Harrison, if you would curse her down. There's a list of questions in here that uh, Commissioner French submitted to our election commission, and that is one of the questions, and it's answered in the in the packet there, just to just to draw your attention to it. I'm sorry, a conservative figure is the terminology that she's listed in the document. Commissioner Hasty, you're recognized, sir. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would like to ask somebody from the. Uh, school board or the director of schools or Mr. Logan to come up, please. 
Uh, that'll be fine, but all questions need to be asked to the chair, you, Mr. Hasey. Okay. Go ahead and state your question, and we'll pick someone out. My question is um, on the passing, if this was to pass, the citizens uh, voted the wheel tax in. Is the amount great enough or sufficient enough to meet the needs of the school shortfall or will we be coming back to ask for a property tax increase um, to fund the other part of it? That's my question. Mr. Well, Brent, you're recognized. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that. Um, thank you, Mr. Hasty, for the question. Um, you know, to, uh, to answer your question really is twofold. What the school board approved is a budget of $86,868,000. The $2.5 million that we project would come from the tax would not balance that budget. However, here comes the second part, is that we would take that obviously back to the, the Board of Education and that we would do our part to make sure that we have a balanced budget. So we would not be back in front of you uh, provided that the that that uh, that the wheel tax passed, and we actually uh, were going to have that projected uh, income. Now, third part, I probably ought to do third part. If it doesn't pass. I'll be standing right here. I understand that. Okay. Part. I, I, I just want to. I'm going to make sure you that. understand because <clears throat> it's important to know that we're 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 going to find it very difficult to balance a budget at 79.9. That is a major step backward, sir. Thank you. Commissioner Wright, you're recognized. <clears throat> this, I guess this question is for uh, Mr. Burr. for the chair. All of them are for the chair. Go ahead. Excuse me, Mr. <laughs> chair. Proceed. It's, it's my understanding, Mr. Chairman, that we'll be about $3 million short even if the wheel tax passes. And, you know, I can't see why we would spend eighty to $90,000 to hear the same thing that I'm hearing from the constituents in my area as well as some of the other areas, we don't want wheel tax. So are, will we be three, what is three point something million dollars short even of your request, even if we pass the wheel tax? Is that correct? Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I'll answer that. I think Mr. Hasty asked that same question just in different verbiage. And I'm going to answer it in the same way, is that the school board passed a budget of $86,868,000. It was based on what we felt like were what is needed in order to provide a high quality education for our students in Blount County. Now, if the wheel, wheel tax passes and it, it produces the projected $2.5 million, Yes, obviously that doesn't balance an 86868 budget. That is correct. However, we'll be taking that back to the Board of Education and we will be balancing our budget. Is that okay, Mr. Bright? More questions? Yes, I, Go ahead. I guess if that's, if that's true, Mr. Chairman, why aren't we taking that $3 million out before the fact? If you're going to reduce it by three million if we don't get all the money we need i can't understand why you can't cut your budget that much now well mr wright it's very simple it, oh, oh yes yeah, it's, it's a very simple matter in that the board of education produced a budget request okay. based on the needs of the school system so it is what it is it's eighty six million eight hundred and sixty eight thousand dollars okay so let me understand this correctly now. If we pass the wheel tax, what are we going to, you're going to go back and say we need to cut this $3 million from your request? Is that what you're saying? I'll have to go back to the Board of Education and say, you know, here's the new projected revenue, here's what we think we can do, and um, we'll put together a budget proposal, but the Board will have to pass it. It's a lot of money, $3 million. Yes, it is, and I've been before. Thank you, Mr. Brett. Mr. Folks, you're recognized, sir. Yeah, let me, uh, 
Let me take a shot at this. I think Mr. Vineyard can probably help us here. Um, may Go I? Yes. Um, Mr. Vineyard, how much will this tax bring in for use by Blunt County Schools, the wheel tax? Mr. Vineyard, you're recognized. The estimated number of vehicles impacted by this tax, if it were to pass, is about 120,000 vehicles, give or take. Mm -hmm. uh, that should generate somewhere around $4.2 million gross. The current distribution of that, it's split dollars. Right. The current distribution to Blount County Schools would be a little over 61% of that or a little over $2.5 million. The remainder would be split 29% roughly to Maryville and 10% roughly to Alcoa. So it would yield for the Blount County Schools, which is what we're really talking about here, it would yield $2.5 million. That's approximately correct, yes. Okay. How much additional money are the schools currently telling us they need? Mr. Folks, I think Mr. Uh, Logan would probably be the best person to answer that question. Mr. Logan, if you'd like to come up, sir. We knew we'd get to you. <laughs> Mr. Logan, you're recognized. Okay, can you repeat the question, please? Yeah. You're going to get, at best, from the wheel tax, $2.5 million. Mm -hmm. As I understood you at the Education Committee meeting, you said we have a gap of $8.6 million. At least that's what it was at that time, and I understand we got about a million dollars worth of good news. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. So the gap is about $7.6 million at the moment yes so the wheel tax will produce two and a half million currently the schools need you're telling us you need seven and a half seven point six million maybe seven point seven million if i mm -hmm. that that would be correct right okay so that seems to tell me that to satisfy this request from the schools, we would need not just a wheel tax, but a very significant increase in the property tax. Um, We have no idea whether the voters will approve this wheel tax. And does anyone really believe the voters of Blount County are going to approve a major new wheel tax at the same time the commission is also considering a major property tax increase. I believe our citizens are smarter than that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Foch? Our chair Mr. Chairman? Uh, Who's recommending a property tax, if you want me to know? That's, that's not in order. The comment's not in order. The pending motion is to adopt Resolution 13-04-002 as amended. Are the members ready for the question? Vote yes to adopt the resolution as amended. Vote no not to adopt the resolution. Milton. 
Yeah, 13 yeses and six noes. 13 yes, <laughs> six noes. The resolution is adopted. The next item of business is F5A. The chair will stand for motion on F5A to set a public hearing at 6 p.m. May 7, 2013, room 430, Blount County Courthouse for the purpose of hearing testimony and comment on resolution to amend the zoning map of Blount County, Tennessee from S, suburbanizing. Motion for recess, I hear a second. All in favor say aye. Commission will come to order. The next item of business is F5A. The chair will stand for motion on F5A. Commissioner Wright, you're recognized. Commissioner Fo uh, Samples moves 5A, B, C, and D. And Commissioner Wright nice. seconds. Second. Pending motion is to set public hearings as set forth on this agenda for items F5, A, B, C, and D. Is there a discussion? We'll be setting all these public hearings for 6 p.m. May the 7th in room 430 Blount County Courthouse to be held consecutively. Are the members ready for the question? Vote yes. To set the public hearings, vote no, not to set. You have 19, yes. 19 yes, zero no. All the public hearings are set for 6 p.m. May the 7th, 2013, room 430, Blount County Courthouse. The next item of business is F6. The chair will stand for motion on item F6, amendments to employees' handbooks. Mr. Farmer moves and Mr. Lale seconds. Discussion. The motion is to approve the, I think I heard him say the motion is to approve the amendments to the employee handbook. Mr. Folks, you're recognized. Just a quick question. Um, there's a, um, I, I asked for a red line copy at the agenda's, agenda meeting. We didn't get a red line copy, but I do see a letter from the mayor itemizing changes. Are those all the changes? Okay, thanks. Are the members ready for the question? Vote yes to approve the amendments to the employee handbook. Vote no not to approve. You have 19 yeses. 19 yes, zero no. The, the amendments are approved. Item G, announcements and statements. Does anyone wish to seek the floor for an announcement or a statement? Seeing no lights, agenda item H, public input on items not on the agenda. 